Hello, it's you, Bagoon. Welcome to this, which may be the final video in the Age of Mythology Learn to Trigger basic series. We've covered quite a lot and should have you triggering up to speed, so let's use everything we've learnt and work on a scenario together. This is a worked example, so this blank map and the finished version are both available to download at the link below. What I'd like to do here is make a very simple basic tower defence single player map using the skills that we've learnt so far. So to start off we've got our track, our villagers, a shop area and this is just an admin area where I'm going to figure out what the waves are. So let's begin. What triggers are we going to need? Start up, basic cinematic stuff, our shop, stats through our units, our waves and our win and lose effects. So, let's go. I'm going to start off this map with, first of all, making sure the player can't build anything except towers. So I'm going to forbid all units for player one, but enable them to build the tower. Now they start in age 1, so I'm going to have to set a few texts to make sure they enter age 2 and can actually build a tower. So our players Greek Hades in this example, so we're going for Ares. We need God Towers to be active. And I also set Prenelations to be active as well to make sure that the arrows can actually track properly. As we've aged up through Ares, I'm going to want to destroy all our god powers and there's a few texts that the player is going to be able to research which I don't want them to be able to. That's going to be watchtower and signal fires. Also going to make sure that the player can build at a reasonable speed so I'm going to set rate construction to be 10 times normal. Then we're going to go into our cinematic going to fire instantly and we're going to go into cinematic mode on. We're going to have the map revealed and we're going to have a camera cut set. It might actually turn into a camera track this one. Quite nice. I'm going to use the sky. I don't think it's going to render fully because we're looking at quite a low angle here. So I'm going to use the sunset sky to give us the best chance. There's probably still going to be a bit of black map in that one. Now the instructions. Very, very basic stuff. So you're just going to want to copy that one over. Okay, fine. So after that camera track finishes, going to make it a bit shorter so we, we can have a camera track to our shop after five seconds. And there we go, that's going to be it for the cinematic, just very short brief and to the point and then we're going to start gameplay so cinematic mode off I'm going to create a trigger here called gameplay begin and then I'm going to link all of these triggers together with fire event so we've got a nice chain
Okay, so when our gameplay starts, player is going to want to have some resources so they can build tower. So I'm just going to remove the starting resources by putting minus a thousand in everything. That way we know we're going to start from zero. I'm going to give them a thousand gold to start off with and have the towers cost a hundred gold. You remember that they do cost a hundred wood, so we need to 200 wood, sorry, so we can remove this with modify proto unit cost wood. And this keeps the 100 gold because it costs 100 gold as standard. What we can also do is look at the build limits because you can build only 30 towers in the game. I'm going to give the player the chance to build a few more. I'm going to set a few other tower stats as well using absolute so I know it's going to exactly where I want it. So let's give them 100 hit points. I'm going to keep the range. I'm going to set this to 10 for the time being and I'm going to leave everything else as it is including number of projectiles. We then want a counter for the waves to begin. Just gives the player a chance to build a little bit before the waves come. So I'm going to give them 30 seconds to start. I'm going to have a nice colour checked here. And this is going to link directly into the waves start trigger. Most of these are just placeholders so I can figure out where everything is and what they're doing. So that completes the admin section of the map. Next, gonna have a look at my shop. Okay, so shop trigger. What I'm going to do for my shop is I'm going to have the shopper unit as the Athena because the player can't destroy it. So let's just set up some names, first of all, with what we're doing. So it's our shopper. I'm selecting both the torch and the column here because it's quite easy to misclick. So let's go for plus one attack for 10 gold. Up here, we'll go for plus one range. Here, we can go for 50 tower hit points. And this one can be a lightning storm god power, but make this quite expensive so the player can't instantly get it. Next for our actual shops they're all going to follow the same generic pattern so they're going to be looped, timer, distance to unit Proseje. and then what we want is a player resource check but I want my shop cost to increment every time so we're going to need to use a quest var resource check which is going to be this one. So if it's equal to or greater than cost attack, then that fires. I haven't defined my vars yet, so I'm going to set them in here. Again, just the naming system is going to help when we're... Oops, <laughs> thinking of the lightning there. Naming system helps when we're moving this one forward. We don't have to have a file for this because it's just going to stay the same, but just going to put it in there for the time being. So if we're greater than that, we want the effect to happen. So I'm going to give the player what we said we'd give them, which is going to be range attack to the tower. And send them a chat to let them know what they've bought. Have a nice sound effect here as well. Then what we want to do is grant resources to charge them for it. And this box here is asking for a number, so we could do minus 10, but we're doing an incremental quest var. We could use our quest var code. But what this is going to do is it's going to grant us more resources, so we can use a minus one 
there for this quest var. You'll note I haven't got the quotes at the start and end of this trigger. That's because of data types, because this box is expecting a number rather than the data type which is given with the plus quotes. So how do this variable? That's a bit more of an intermediate thing to do. I'll be covering it in the first video in the intermediate series if it ever gets made, but for now that's just something to remember. Essentially we're using trailing zeros and it doesn't matter. Then I'm going to modify that var so it gets bigger every time. And that's the same structure I'm going to follow. I'm just going to copy this all around now. With range, the only other thing I need to do is grant line of sight as well as range, because it's all very well having the range. If you haven't got the line of sight, it's not going to make much of a difference. So I forgot to change the name as we've modified our quest var, so we don't want it to constantly be displaying the same number there. I am using the borders here because I don't want the training zeros and it's the correct data type. get rid of those because we're not incrementing the cost here and instead of a modify proto unit I'm going to grant god power to the player. This one it's going to be SPC lightning storm just because you can invoke multiple ones of them and it doesn't trigger the battle music. It's what they use in the single player campaign for the Odin Tower lightning storm effects. Okay there we go that's all done with the shops Next, unit stats, and this is going to be the enemies. So, again, I'm going to grant gold by killing enemies. So, we'll remember how we did this in a single trigger from before. So, just assign any value to be greater than enemy units killed cost. Then, modify that bar and grant the resources. Easy, that's all we need to do for granting gold. Now because I've used enemy units killed cost, I need to reflect this in the units. So if I'm, these are going to be player two units, they're just placeholders so I know what I'm doing for the waves. So our militia cost gold. We can just make it cost one because it doesn't cost anything. For the spearmen, we need to be slightly more in tune with the map here. So if we go into detailed help, we cost a total of 70 resources. If I say minus 68 gold, it still costs two wood or two resources in total. It's just made up of negative gold and positive wood. Same for the hoplites. That's 90, so we'll go for 87.
and the Fnatic, which is the Royal Guard. That costs a total of 130. And finally, the Destroyer. He costs 130 as well. So they're now going to cost 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 gold, and that means we're going to get more gold when we kill them. Might be worth uh, modifying the stats as well, so we can make sure that they're actually a viable unit and actually worth killing. So balance is something that's actually really difficult to do. I'm just plucking these numbers out of thin air here. I have no idea what this scenario is actually going to look like when we test it, if it's going to be too hard or too easy, but we shall see. Level 5 make it a bit, bit better and give it a bit of a speed boost as well, make it a bit of a formidable enemy there. So that's our stats. Next we have to do our waves. So we've got some linking triggers, as you remember from the admin group when we're looking at our events. So wave start was just a placeholder and we can do this if we just want to trigger something but we don't want to come back to it later. So this is just firing another event. We could have some sound effects in here or what I'm actually going to do is set a quest var wave to plus one. And then what we're going to do here is display it as a fake counter. And of course, if you want, you can put the quest file code in here rather than do the numbers. Next, we need to have a little think about how we're going to spawn our units. So I'm going to make a trigger spawn hoplite. Or militia, sorry, getting ahead of ourselves. And what's going to happen here is we're going to deploy our militia. And we're just going to do one at a time in this trigger. And we're going to move it over to the temple. We're going to have an attack move off there and when a militia is spawned I'm going to modify a quest var. You can probably see where this is going from here. So I'm going to put a timer in here so they don't all spawn crazily all at once because that's a bit harsh in the first wave. So if we've got more than one of the militia counts we're going to spawn a militia. I'm going to set that to 15 and fire it. So that means for the start of wave one we're just going to spawn 15 militia. It's going to give the player a total of 15 times 1, 15 gold. Isn't really too much. Now waves, I could be looping this and having a quest far to do this but I'm just going to be using a timer for the moment, just give them a tiny little bit of respite just so I'm linking them and then it's quite clear what's happening. So here I've got to wave two and it's going to be hoplites again. Don't need to do that, I just need to Make sure my quest file is correct. Now I'm just going to sort out all the rest of my spawns while we're doing this.
there we go. So I'm going to link my waves together and all these spawn triggers, are, as you can see, getting quite messy now. I'm actually getting rid of the spawn fire events and I'm just going to fire them all from the first wave. It's just to save myself a bit of sanity there rather than having to look back and find out where they're all going. If you fire a trigger twice by mistake, as I've done there, it doesn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things. If I wanted to be a bit cooler, I could put some more timers on here, so there'd be kind of mini waves, so first you get the hoplites, then you get the destroyers, but we're just doing this for simplicity's sake. Next, we want the loss condition, and that's going to be units in area. Now, if I did by type, I'd have to do it for everyone. If I do units in area as the blank and just type in all, that's going to be a bit more useful for me. So I'm going to make it that if more than one unit, remember that relates to the count, not the radius, it can get a bit, a bit confusing. And I'm just going to make it for all of these and use the all effect. And then if this happens, we lose. So set player defeated one and end the game. There we go. And I haven't done a victory condition yet because it's just a perpetual game at the moment. So there we go. Let's see what happens when we give this map a go. Here, Joe's. So let's oh, get some towers built. You can see I've given myself a bit more gold because I died on wave one. <laughs> We've got a shop where we can buy stuff with ever increasing costs. So we've got two range. And let's get some more attack. You can see it's increasing every time we buy it. And now we're ready for the waves and hopefully we're going to make some money. So you see all these units dying, and we're gaining one gold every time. In a real map, what you'd be doing is you'd be probably modifying the projectile so it's just one. You'd be paying a bit more attention to the stats, balance, and notably the armor there as well. So that's good. We've made a nice bit of money there. Now see we're entering wave three and we're getting different units spawning, so we're getting these super strong hot lights spawning as well. And it looks like they're gonna reach the end, so I ooh, very narrowly survived that one. And we've got even stronger units coming, but just one at a time, and they're granting us a bit more gold. When they die, I'm going to very quickly build another tower there. My proceeds, and you can see we're in wave five. We've got these fast, very strong units, and again, I haven't balanced this at all, so it's probably impossible. But now you can see we're going to lose. Yeah, there we go. So, this map's available for you to look at. You might be able to tidy it up a bit. You might be able to complete it or balance it a bit better than I've done in this brief example here. Still been quite a long video, even though I've said it's a brief example. But there we go. So, we've gone all the way from not knowing what a trigger is into making a functional and reasonable small tower defence scenario. We've learned a lot along the way and demystified some components. So, congratulations. You've now graduated from my Age of Mythology Learn to Trigger Basics series. If you've got some comments, please post them below. I'd really like to know what you thought of this video and this series. If there are any particular questions, I might be able to expand on this series by putting more videos in the basic section. 
But as things stand, we'll see if there's enough interest to move on to the intermediate video section, because there's still a lot more tricks to learn. And I hope you've gleaned the power of the Aged Mythology Editor, and I've got you interested in making new maps. Good luck, and have fun!